Hello everyone, this is Adam for RealHomeRecording.com. As always, in a previous video, I talked about buffer size for recording versus mixing. And if you haven't watched that video already, be sure to check that out. Look in the video description for a link, or if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put it in an annotation on screen. So I talked about the buffer sizes but I didn't show you how to actually set them the right way. So obviously I can't show you 20 different dolls, but I will show you my primary doll, which is called Reaper. So what you want to do in Reaper, you're going to go to the options menu, go down to preferences, or you can press control P. And then what you want to do, if you're at the top here, you're going to look for audio and then you're going to look for devices. Right now, this is set to my internal sound card in the computer. What I want to do is switch it to ASIO, which is the interface that, well, it's the driver system that my interface uses primarily. ASIO has the best quality. It's the fastest latency. So you click that. I also have the option for my Fast Track Ultra but I have the audience plugged in right now. So I'm going to choose that and I have all my inputs and outputs set up. That's not what I'm concerned with right now. What I'm concerned with are primarily three things. Number one, sample rate. Now I can't change this right now because I'm actually recording with the sound card. Normally I would have this set to 96000 or 96,000. The thing you got to remember is whenever you're typing in these different dolls, you can't put commas. You have to just put the numbers. So that's why it says 44100, which is CD quality. You can also do 48,000, 88200, or 88.2. And then finally, my favorite... And actually, it says unacceptable. Apparently, I typed something else in. I didn't realize it. All right, so 96,000, which is equivalent to 96 kilohertz because kilo means thousand. And then over here is our important thing. Now, normally, I think by default, this option is not checked. Request block size. So you want to enable that, make sure this is also checked, the, the sample rate. And what I'm going to do is, right now it's at 512, but what I want to do is hit ASIO configuration. This may or may not come up on your screen. This is my control panel software. I don't know what Audient calls their stuff. Fast Track, M Audio calls it the control panel. So I'm just going to call it the control panel, the mixer software, the, the interface driver software, whatever. All the same thing. All that matters is two things. And I'm going to push this to the side so you guys can actually, I really wish I could see it over here. Hold on. All right, I'm closing it out so I can see it over on my left side. I prefer my left side. I can see it better this way. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to setup and then set ASIO buffer size. And as you can see, it is at 512, just like over here, 512. I could set this lower if I was actually recording and if I had my sample rate set to 96 kilohertz, I could actually set this, I think the lowest this car goes is 64 samples. So if I were to pick 64 samples, I would make sure it's clicked on here. So right now I'm gonna pretend, so 512, so it won't change. And I'm going to X out of here. And then I'm going to, sh on here, 441, because that's what my sample rate was set at inside of the control panel software. And then I'm going to have my buffer size on here set to the same number as the buffer size in the control panel software. Now, some of your interfaces may make it automatic. I don't trust that ever. And if you ever have a mismatch, you might run into problems. 
So I always want to set the number manually. Usually for just typical recordings where I don't have to have a really low latency, 512 works for me. 128 is another good number. Any lower than that, and you might run into like some click and uh, pop issues if your computer is not good enough. Uh, and I'm not saying that as a joke. There's a lot of computers that just for whatever reason won't run really well at the very fast latencies. So 512 is good for me, and that that's okay because when you record, your DAW should align your notes and lyrics properly for any type of delay. So you can have it at a really high latency and it should still shift your recording over. And when you're listening to it, it won't be out of sync because when you're listening to it, you're actually monitoring off of this channel, which is analog. You're not sending it into your computer and then back out. It's just, you're just hearing it. Like if you had a mixing board, you're hearing analog and that's what you're hearing here. Analog has essentially no latency uh, or at least imperceptible latency so again uh, by the way this would probably sound terrible so um see how it's left and right because i was recording a stereo signal before so i would normally have this centered these two inputs centered but that's kind of a cool thing you can do anyway but back on topic um, my last thing that I need to do, again, we're working with a CD quality sampling rate, which is 44.1 kilohertz or 44100 in here. So now that we have all this set, again, going to set up ASIO buffer size, double checking on that, double checking on the sample rate. Yep. We're at 44.1 kilohertz X out of this. And then finally, everything's good. We're going to hit if apply was available, I might hit apply, but I can just hit OK. And then my final step in my project. Now, this will be different in your software. Under Reaper, go to File, Project Settings. And then we're going to look for, first of all, Wave Bit Depth. Change that to 24-bit PCM if it isn't already there. And then we're going to go to the Project Settings tab. And make sure this is checked. It's not always checked by default. Project sample rate. And then we can flip it. See, we have all the options here. We're going to flip it to whatever our sample rate is on the interface software and in the buffer settings. We want all those settings to be the same. Otherwise, things can get... Eh, they might work. They might not work. I don't like taking chances when it comes to recording. So just have, make sure everything is set to the exact same numbers. Hit OK. You're good to go. And if you ever need to change anything, if you ever need to change the sample rate, if you ever need to change the buffer size, that's how to do it. And then if you change the sample rate, of course, you're, you should change your project setting to your new sample rate. Again, my normal number is 96,000. All right, that's pretty funny. As soon as I change my sample rate and hit OK, my screen capture software crashed. So I don't know where it left off, but I just wanted to finally say that if you change your sample rate and your bit depth, that information changes up here in Reaper so that you always know what you're recording to and what your buffer size is set to up, up in the upper right-hand corner. You can never... You don't have to go into the preferences and find it. It's always right there at your disposal. And in fact, you can just click this and immediately go to your audio device. Now, how convenient is that? This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.